identify the purpose of the commands on the menu bar, uh, work with some buttons on the toolbar. Uh, we learn how to enter data into a spreadsheet, understand absolute and relative cell references, and perform basic mathematical operations in a spreadsheet, some logical functions, and learn how to insert charts and how to use solver. Let's open Excel. Oops. Close this one, the second. Okay. Let's open Excel. <coughs> so, Excel interface. Um, I have op open a blank spreadsheet. So you go um, to file new and then blank workbook this is what i have here okay. <clears throat> so uh once we open black workbook uh we have lots of options first of all we have quick access toolbar that's here uh, on the top, auto save, uh, see here, save button, this is undo, redo, and so on. You can uh, add and remove options here with, uh, with a click on the arrow. Also, you have tabs, file, oops, file, home, insert, page layout, and so on. Uh, so these are tabs, and under and below that here, this is the ribbon. <clears throat> so ribbons are designed to help you quickly find the command you want to execute. Uh, ribbons are divided into these logical groups. So we have a tab home, and here we can manipulate uh, cells, text, we can justify and so on. For data, uh, we can get data, sort data, filter them, and so on. So into logical uh, groups. Uh, here are cells. So this is the area where we enter our data, where we enter text, calculations, and everything. Here is the formula bar uh, and formula bar allows you to perform multiple commands and this is usually in the form of a cal calculation you can insert different things for example let's enter numbers here two and five and in formula bar uh, we can do equal two plus five that will be seven but if we uh, the result will be seven but if we look into the formula bar we will see exactly what are the references for this cell which values we used which cells we used also we have a name box here that's this one that says a2 that's because i currently selected cell a2 uh, and that is the active cell so if you click on cell A5, that's the current active cell. So how to save and open? Let's start with that. Um, simply as going with uh, Word or other uh, simple software, we just go to File, 
and then save as. Then choose the location where you want to save. Okay, let's do desktop. So choose your name. And click save. Okay, now let's close it. We have saved our uh, file, but we can either double click now to open this worksheet or we can first open Excel. Okay, blank and then file, open and then choose the file that we want to open. And this is our file. So we will go through some basics today, but uh, you might need help in the future. And you can find uh, assistance by typing directly into search. Here it says, tell me what you want to do. If you increase it, it should say so. Um, you can, uh, it allows you to use intuitive language to find what you need. Uh, for example, it shows you results as soon as you start typing. For example, you can type uh, insert picture and then select your image. You can type just picture, just pick. And it, it will offer uh different options uh you can execute commands directly from this menu for example font size and you can select your font for example 18 and so on you have to select first of course Font is now 14. So whenever you're stuck with Excel, simply use this search feature or tell me more feature. And also know that you can always Google your Excel related questions. So Google is your friend. So we already mentioned that uh, spreadsheets, this is a spreadsheet, the spreadsheets contain cells. A cell is the intersection between a row and a column on a spreadsheet. Columns are vertical blocks represented by alphabet, A, B, C, D, and so on. Rows are horizontal blocks. Here we have rows and are represented in numbers. So for example, here you see how D tree is shaded. So we have a cell D tree in column D and cell tree. So first we want to talk about how to format cells. Let me delete this. So all cell content uses the same formatting by default, but you can customize the look of your work, workbook and draw attention to specific sections, make your content easier to view and understand. So let's populate cells with some data. For example, let's type date. And here, let's type amount. Okay. Now let's use uh, April, right? April first, April second. Any date you want, it's irrelevant. Now let's enter some amounts. Okay. 
For example, how much money we spend each day. Okay. So our, our table doesn't look very pretty at the moment. So let's change the font first. Let's select the cells that we want to modify. So here, let's, let's select all of our information and change font. You can go to the arrow. So under home, you can select any font that you want. I'll use, for example, or you can type. For example, Times New Roman. And this is the font size. Let's select 16. So the text changed to the selected font and to the selected size. Now, uh, let's change the font color, for example. If you want date and amount to be in some different color, uh, let's make it red. We would use this underlined letter A. For example, let's make it red. Another option is to use bold, italic, and underlined. Let's bold it. What we can see here is that um, part of our cells are not visible. So if you go in between cell uh, column B and column C, you could double click and it will automatically spread so it fits our data. Now, if we want to have another, we forgot, for example, to, to define what we are creating. Let's click on row one and insert a new row. So this row is automatically now created. And let's create some titles, spent in April, for example. But we want it spread across both columns A and B. So we select columns A and B and click Merge and Center. Now let's change its font size to 20, font to Times New Roman. Let's bold it and make it italic, for example. Okay, so now this is our title, for example. Let's make some background color, for example, blue. As this is our table, uh, as this is our table, let's add some lines. Uh, for example, we can select everything and then add all borders. And if we copy it somewhere, for example, let's copy it in Word. Okay, this is what we get. We have all the borders. You can change borders in Word, of course, but it might be easier to navigate all that in Excel. So let's change the color, for example, of our entire table to something pale. Okay. And we want our, for example, the amounts. Let's select all four amounts and click right justified line right that's also under home home tab and we want it right justified and then date and amount we might want it centered so column a and column b seem it seems that these are not of the same size but we can modify that. For example, let's select both columns, A and B, and click column width. And we can select 
uh, for example, size eight. Oops, not eight. It's not sufficient, so let's do 16. Okay. And let's select all rows and choose some height. I don't know, not six. Okay, 20. So our, all of our text is now visible. Uh, we know how to change alignment. So uh, left justified, centered, right justified. We know how to merge and center cells. And uh, how to make text, for example, bold, italic, how to change background color or text color, and so on. How to insert new rows or new columns, that would be the same thing. Right click and then uh, insert. So it will create a new column between A and B. So let's do, okay, now. Uh, let's format cells. You see, uh, we have dates here, and we have some amounts in column B. Uh, so if we select, for example, uh, cell A3, and go to format cells, new window will pop up. And we can see that it is currently uh, displayed as date, so April 1st. But we can change the format. Sorry, January 4th, okay. If we do this format, it's easier. So it's January actually, January 4th, 2020, it's okay. So let's change it because this format is less confusing. So format cells and use a different format where you can see the month name. Okay. Now let's select these four cells where our amount is. And again, format cells. Instead of general, let's use currency two decimal places and we want a simple dollar sign. If you click OK, it will automatically have a dollar sign in front. Date and amount. Okay, let's format those. Can be formatted as text. So even if we have a number in these cells, it will be treated as a text. So that's important. You can play with that and see what you actually need. Okay. So what is a cell reference? What is a cell reference? A cell reference refers to a cell or a range of cells. So this is a cell and this is a range of cells on a worksheet and can be used in a formula so that Excel can find the values or data that you want that formula to calculate. Out. Reference. We have three types. We have relative, absolute, and mixed. So, for example, if we enter here in cell A10, for example, two, and in cell A11, we do equals two, 
3 plus a tan. So we just added 3. The result will be 5, right? So uh, by default, uh, we use relative cell references, meaning that if I use another here uh, in C10, for example, 12 minus A10, it will give me result 10. So what happens if I change this value? Instead of 2, let's put 5. So both A11 and C10 changed. That's the benefit of using Excel. If you type, for example, here, let me delete this. I don't need this anymore. Okay. Since I deleted the, the ref, cell reference, uh, it will provide an error. I just deleted A10. So let's delete everything and start over. For, for cell A1, let's type equals 2 plus 4. And Excel can work as a calculator. It will give me a result 6. But the better option is instead of typing 2 plus 4, let's use cell references. So, for example, let me create another cell. For example, variable A equals 12. This is my variable. This is my variable B equals 4. And C equals A plus B. So this is text. Will be equal to cell B1 plus cell B2. And the result is 16. So now if we change any of A or B variables, the result will also change. So those are relative, the default versions. So let's do one simple example. Okay. For example, I have something like this. So I have length in inches and length in centimeters. And we want to convert inches to centimeters. The conversion factor here is 2.54. So conversion factor is 254, meaning that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So how would we do that as equal to this value times conversion factor? And we would expect that we would be able to just um, slide our cursor and have everything filled in. But what happened in cell B7, we have the result zero. Although we want to do the same thing, 10 multiplied by 254. With, what if we have millions of data? We don't want to do uh, one by one. We want to use uh, cell references and especially utilize absolute and mixed cell references. So what do we need to change? For example, here, let's delete this. So cell B2 equals to A2 multiplied by B12. Next one is A3 multiplied by the cell just below. However, we don't want cell B13, we want B12 again. So our option is to fix B12 cell, to fix it, meaning to allow it to have dollar signs. We do it by uh, creating a dollar sign in front of B and in front of 12. So in front of column and in front of rows, row name, and click enter. Now, if we drag our cursor, we will see that cell B3 is A3 multiplied by 
double click, we'll see exactly. A3 multiplied by B12, and that's exactly what we wanted. Another way to do this, let's just do B12. So, instead of uh, entering dollar signs, we could just click F4, F4 on our keyboard. F4. Now let's drag it. Now we have converted all of the lengths in, from inches to centimeters. Okay, what about mixed cell references? So that means actually that, okay, I have an example here. I'll do it in another sheet. Okay. So sale season. Uh, here are the original prices of a jacket, hat, t-shirt, and jeans, for example. And in January, there is price reduction of 30%. In February of 20%, March 25% from original price. So here for January and jackets, we want to combine $120 with 30% discount. So that would actually be $120 multiplied by one minus 30 over 100, right? Because it's 70% of an actual price. So the new jacket price would be $84. But what happens if we just extend the same formula, we have a mistake. We have some, for example, for hat in January, it multiplied $30, that's good, but it multiplied with the cell below the one we want. We want, again, one min minus 30 over 100. So we have to change something. That's why I want to use mixed Cell we want to use cell mixed cell reference. And the reason for that is, so what do we want here? We want 30 times cell B9 instead of B10. B9. For t-shirts, again, we want, this is good, multiplied by B9. We want B9 always in the entire column. So why don't we use our absolute value at first? We'll see why not later. So absolute value, and then extend it for entire January. So we have uh, B9, B9, okay, that's fixed. Fixed value for the discount in January. But if we do the same thing, for February and March, we would get zeros. So why did we get zeros? Simply because first we used C2 instead of B2. We want to stay on these original prices. And we don't want to use January reduction, we want to use February reduction, right? So, here we need, instead of C2, we want B2. And instead of B9, we want C9. Yes, that's what we want. And for this one, jackets in January, we have B2 and B9. And here we have B2 and C9. So what changed? Only the name of the column in the second part.
So uh, that's why we don't want this dollar sign. We don't want the column fixed. So let's try that. Instead of using dollar sign B dollar sign nine, let's remove this dollar sign. We only so we only fix the row number. So what happens if we change that? Okay, our first column didn't change. Our February jacket column now has, okay, good reduction, 20% in February, but C part is still not good. That's because instead of B, we're having C. So we want column, number, column name to be fixed. So instead of B2, instead of relative cell, we want to fix the column name. So we'll place dollar sign in front of B. Now let's expand this selection and see what we got. So for example, March t-shirt, $40.25 price reduction. Everything looks good, but what have we actually done? We fixed, in our first part, uh, we fixed only the row, sorry, the column. We fixed the column and allowed rows to change according, please, it, uh, according to the product type. Also, uh, for price reduction, we needed one minus, okay, B9. Here, we only fix the row and we let columns to change from January, February, and March to B, C, and D. So when it's not absolute, when you're not, uh, you can fix either rows or columns. So fixed rows or columns. Also, you can change that by using command F4. Let's try it. Here, instead of B2, let's just uh, type F4. So on our keyboard, now it's relative, absolute, mixed, where, where rows are fixed, and now the columns are fixed. Now let's go to basic functions. So a function is a predefined formula. So you can calculate, uh, you're using specific values in a particular order. So Excel has many common functions and that can improve efficiency of your data manipulation a lot. But in order to use these functions correctly, you need to understand different parts of a function. So, functions. He has three parts. First part is the equal sign. The second part is the function name. So that can be average, for example. And then we have arguments. So let's try that. Okay, we have our length here in centimeters. So I'll use this data. And I want to find the average length. So for example, I will just type what? Equal and then average. And then select all cells that contain numbers that I want to find the mean of. So all of these, from B2 to B9. And then close the bracket and click enter. And this is my mean. Let's do sum. Oops. Sum. Again, equal sum of all these values close brackets and enter. Minimum, 
maximum. Let's do these two. Again, we start with an equal sign, minimum, and just simply select your arguments. N equal maximum, and enter. So our formula bar will tell us exactly how our function should look like. We start with an equal sign, then we have different functions that we can use, for example, for max, these are very straightforward, and most are. And then we have arguments. If we use a range of cells, more than one cell, uh, you, you see that we have a column between the first cell and the last cell, B2 and B9, and we have a column in between. Or you can simply use your mouse and select uh, your arguments. So the same as using your calculator, we can use addition, for example, let's do this, with a plus sign, we can use subtraction, the minus sign, multiplication, with a star, division, oops, equals, this divided by this. So you can try it out. <clears throat> um, for example, if you have values, for example, A, and this is our variable that is equal to 4, and I want to calculate square root of 4, I would type equal square root of 4, and then close brackets, and I get 2. If I change my variable to 16, I will get 4, and so on. Also, the order in which calculation is performed can affect the return value. So that's, that's the important part to understand the order of operations. Excel calculates the formula from left to right. So if you, if you combine your operators, um, as always, as in math, uh, here is what, what is followed. So first brackets, then exponents, so either power or roots. Uh, then we have multiply or divide, add, subtract, and finally left, right. So let's keep in mind that because if we use, for example, this is square root plus Again, variable A multiplied by this number divided by this number plus this. Okay. I got minus 7.2 here. But if I just change the bracket brackets here, I would get a different result. So that was the point. <clears throat> so, um, okay, let's count numbers, for example. Count equals count this. We have eight values here. <clears throat> so if you want to do some trigonometry, it's very easy. Uh, for example, if you have a angle, 
that is 30 degrees and we want to calculate its sine, just type equals sine and then the value. But you see how I got here minus, minus one. Uh, the thing is that Excel, uh, when doing sine, assumes that we're doing radians. And if we're doing degrees, for example, if this is 30 degrees, we would need to convert it first. to radians. Then we get the right result. So if it's in degrees, convert to radians first by with this formula. Okay. Now if you change it to 90, we will get one and so on. Similarly, instead of sine, you can use cosine. And so on. I want to go to sorting and how to manipulate large data. Yeah, I found here a file. I'll send you a link. So if you go to this file, You can simply either copy all, all data or you can download it like this. You open it. And this is what we get. So let's open this data just to see what we have. Okay, let's enable editing and go to the second sheet, sales orders. See here that we have um, arrows because everything is filtered. I'll just show you how it's done. The remove filter. Okay, I will select the first row, the black one, and go to sort under home tab, sort and filter, and then filter. So this is obviously a region. Okay, someone was buying some material, how many units and so on. So if you have, when these arrows appear, for example, we can select to see only 2020. We can copy this data into a new sheet. So this is only from 2020. And this is my sheet, okay. I will again sort and filter so I get our, these arrows. And for item, for example, I want to see all the pens bought, only two. And here I can see the dates. Let's mark these purchases in yellow 
And then let's remove the filter, clear filter from item. So we can easily manipulate, uh, okay, order date. We can sort, it's currently, no, it's not sorted, okay. Let's sort from newest to oldest. We can sort by regions, okay, central, east, and west, and so on. You can use this to manipulate data. So what if you want to see, let's use relational operators. What's that? So these are less than, less than or equal to, equal, greater than, greater than or equal to, not equal to, for example. But what if we want in our example to see which of these is larger than $300? For example, lower $300. And let's use if function. So if this number is over 300, let's... Uh, Tell me true, if it's not, false. So we'll use equal, just as any function should start with equal, if this number is over 300. And then if yes, okay, let's do yes. And if no, leave blank. So what I did here is test. Um, first, what do we want to test? We want to test if this uh, amount is over larger, greater than 300. If it is true, see here, value is true. If it's true, it should, uh, give me a text, yes. If it's false, give me a blank cell. And now let's drag a result. So we got some yes, some, some cells are yes, some are empty. Or uh, purchases over $300. So we can test. Uh, different, we can test different things. Okay. So why do we use charts? A simple chart in Excel can can often provide more information than a sheet full of numbers. And we need it in all, for example, research papers. So graphical illustration can help you visualize comparisons, trends, and so on. And Excel has several different types of charts. And you can, you can check to see which fits your data in the best way. So, Let's try an example. Okay, I have some data here. Okay, it's a year, different years, and I have number of bachelor degrees in science and engineering in the US. Okay. These data are probably not true, but it's relevant. I just want some numbers. Now, try to have this corner 
cell empty because it might be easier. You can change it later. Now just select both columns and click insert and select 2D line. And we got some things automatically. For example, the chart title. We got years at the bottom. We got number of bachelor degrees on our y-axis. So what, is this uh, chart representable? Probably not. But what happens if I put 2006 only 100 degrees? Our chart is automatically changed. That's okay. Now it's better. So, uh, if we want to make our chart visually pleasing, you can do it by selecting the chart and then click Design. We have chart tools here and then Design and add different elements. For example, axis titles. Let's do horizontal and vertical. Uh, let's do trend line. Linear. Make this larger. Okay. So these are in hundreds of hundreds of thousands. So if I um, change axis titles to year, and here number of degrees, we change font. We can use exactly the same things as in cells. For example, Arial size 14 bold text color black Arial 14 black our years i can again change our font Make it black. We double click on our axis. We will see minimum, maximum value. Also, what type of increments do we want? Since our chart is basically between 30 and 60,000, let's change that, 300, sorry, 300,000. That's 350. Okay. And what if you want to do in uh, tens of thousands? So you would change this, our number, yeah, uh, thousand separator, okay, let's add that. In display units in tens of thousands, for example. And we don't need decimal places. Let's remove decimal places. And here 
we have values in tens of thousands. Okay. So uh, we have our trend line. That means uh, we want to fit our data, actually. Uh, it might be, is it exponential? It, it depends what you want. But you can, for example, display R squared value on your chart. Let's increase it so it's visible. So if I choose linear, yeah, linear, I have a coefficient of determination of 95%. And I can display my equation also. If I want logarithmic, no, power. Yeah, you can play with this. You want to increase your coefficient of determination. For example, polynomial. Yeah, but you don't want to overfit your data, whatever you do. And there are many options. For example, if I select my chart and go to format, no, sorry, to design, I can change chart type automatically. So column, yeah. You can use bar charts, column charts, and so on. This looks better. I can add data labels. It looks ugly, but, but you can do it. I can change how, how my bars appear. Change the width. Uh, Change the color by with the right click and changing fill, and so on. So this is my trend line, for example. We have lots of options, and the best way to learn it is by playing with it. Okay. Also, we can move chart and so on. If we want to use different data, we would right click on our chart and go to select data and go to edit, serious values. Okay, it's currently we're using these data. What if you want to use all except last two? Okay, and here 2011 and 2012 automatically disappeared. So you can manipulate which data you want to use. Uh, for example, these increments don't look very nice. Um, what if we do increments of 50,000? and so on. So try to play with it and you will learn charts, definitely. So here is an example. I want you to, I want you to try it yourself. So it asks you to calculate density in kilograms per cube meter as a function of temperature in Celsius. So I want to do this. So let's create two columns. The first one is temperature. And the second column is density. Okay, uh, temperature ranges from zero to 50 Celsius with increments of five. So let's, the first one will be zero. The second one will be 
zero plus five. Then we can just drag this until we reach 50. Okay. Our density is equal to So I just use this 101, 300 divided by 26.9 times temperature in Celsius plus 273. So, you can try now uh, and make this look pretty. For example, change the background color, change the font, add temperature in Celsius. For example, temperature in Celsius will be, let's insert a symbol, this one, close and see. Define the width of each column then if of your columns and rows. Density, we want it in kilograms per square meter. Example, we want the superscript here. Okay. Make it bold and so on. Uh, use only two decimal places, for example. Format cells. Number, only two decimal places. And so on. Add borders. So play with it a little. And then create a chart. And I will wait until you try it yourself. Okay? Let me know when you're ready. So we can create an XY scatter by selecting our data and then insert and then scatter. Now let's make it prettier. We want to design it, we want to add different chart elements such as 
access titles, vertical axis, Yeah, we can add legend if we want to. So let's make temperature here. In Celsius and density in kilograms per cube meter. Let's change font. Change the color of our dots. They are fill black. On 12, let's call this figure one. You can write whatever you want. Okay. So again, if you want, if something doesn't look right, you can select your data, you can choose what you want. So just add it and then what do you want on your X axis and what do you want on your Y axis? And select whatever you want. Let me show you one more thing. Charts. For example, pie chart. Uh, yes, do you have questions about this temperature density chart? XY scatter. Are you there? Okay, so if we have for example product and amount and we have eight hundred kilograms. kilograms of vegetables, dairy, meat, for example. These numbers are relevant again. Now let's highlight our data. insert and create a pie chart 2d pie chart we will get a uh, pie chart will appear but again we can modify it by clicking okay chart element data labels can be on the outside end, for example. You can change its size. For 
and so on. Move the legend. Top right. And so on. So there are different ways uh, of showing our data. Solver. That's the final thing that you want to show. Okay, another sheet. So, uh, for example, a company is producing a product, whatever, for example, pens. And the cost of making all these pens is cost of production. Revenue is equal also to some value, but it all depends on the number of pens. Units sold. How many pens do you have to make to make certain production and certain revenue? So let's assume that this value, this number is 10. So our production will be 1 plus SQRT of number of pens multiply that by 200 and revenue is equal to number of pens raised to the power of 2 multiplied by 2. So if we create 10 pens, if we sell 10 pens, uh, we would use $633. Let's create this as format sales as currency. We would use $633 while we only made 200. So we're losing. 10 pence are not enough. Revenue minus production. Would be this minus this. So we lost $433. So the question here is how many units would they have to sell before they started making money? We can use solver here. This is another important number. So if you go to data, meaning our solver, if it's not installed, install it first, it's an add-on. So we want our objective, meaning the difference between revenue and production, to be zero. And we're changing this cell, cell B1, to see what's the result. So this here is what we got. Uh, we have to create 21.56. Okay, so the answer would be 22 pence. So if you do 22 pence, our revenue minus production would be $28. If we made 21 pen, we would still lose $35. So our factory, our company, needs to create at least 22. Pence. That is the use of solver.